Hey, good morning, y'all. Welcome to or welcome back to Figs Outside. So today, um, we're going to be taking a look at, because we've been getting a lot of snow here. I know it's a little late, but anyway, we're going to be taking a look at the Colpin Outdoors, the Colpin Switchblade ATV snow plow. So here it is. There it is, guys. So Colpin Outdoors. So most versatile and universal ATV snowplow system, two blade sizes and one box. So what it does, is it actually extends from 48 inches to 60 inches. There it is there, assembles in one hour. And you kind of see it there, that's where it extends at and goes off on the side. Um, see, requires a winch, which is sold separately. I already have one on the ATV up there. Um, anyway, so, a little bit about it right there. Sorry guys for the glare. So I already opened it up just to mean that I was like, hey, you know what, I've got to make a video of this. So here we go. Piece of cardboard. There is the owner's manual application. It's a uh, universal. So here's this plate. And that looks like the mounting plate because underneath side sorry for the mess everybody but uh yeah wife's in the middle of tanning a bunch of hides so we've got some styrofoam parts pieces these look like the arms so let's see if we can uh, well, i'm not sure what uh, language this is but there's what it looks like so those right here look like the tubular arms and then let's see what we have we have some u-bolts uh, all right let's see let's get this box So it looks like we have a whole bunch of bolts that come in this nice little package. So there's all the hardware. Got some nuts, bolts, and uh, they're nicely labeled. Item 26. Um, and it tells you what size they are. Uh, flange lock nut, M8 1.25. Same thing with the bolts, the washers, all that stuff. So good deal. Um, we have a whole bunch of little parts and brackets here. Here's the springs. Uh, those look like the lever arms. And more stuff from packing stuff. All right. Well, hold on, guys. Let me uh, get back to you in a second. Okay, I'm back. So here's the main body of the blade. Cold pan. And then these are the wings up here. Um, so there's some more of the hardware. It's right there. Some U-bolts. Um, some other brackets. And I'm not going to go over this step by step on, you know, step by step on putting it together. That's what the instructions are for. Um, you guys don't need to watch me do that. You can read the instructions yourself and do it. But I will time myself to see how long it actually takes. Um, and uh yeah and then we'll go from there so i already got some of the stuff unboxed and uh yeah hopefully we're we get her mounted on the old atv here so there's the old winch over there it quit working the solenoids burned out on it and uh something happened on the internal drum it was real gritty real grindy anyway it was pretty old so put a brand new warren uh 25 on there got some of the new sun f Bighorn style uh, tires. But anyway, yeah, um, it's universal, so it should mount up underneath on the body. And uh, hopefully it'll all go together. And like I said, I'm going to time myself to see how it goes and how long it actually takes. It says it only takes an hour, but, you know, if you have the basics on wrenching. Ooh, got some snow blowing into the garage. It's cold outside today. It's a whole whopping 22 degrees. So, anyway. I'm going to get it going, and uh, yeah, and then I'll let you guys know afterward, and we'll kind of go through uh, what it looks like together, and uh, then on mount.
mounting it. All right, hopefully we'll see you within an hour. Bye. So one thing that's really nice is it tells you before you begin. Uh, accessory is exclusively designed for your vehicle. This one's actually universal. But what's really nice is it's got the danger thing in there, but it tells you what tools are required. So that's pretty sweet. Um, reach work all nuts and bolts. Approximate assembly time is 45 minutes on the box says an hour. Maybe that's with opening the box. I don't know. But anyway, I just wanted to share that with you before I get started. All right. Well, I might as well share this too. So a lot of these parts have stickers on them. I'm guessing that's supposed to be the part that coincides with the instructions to assemble them, but they're way off. As you can tell, here's the springs, number 10. Pivot, lock, bracket. That's, yeah, not right. Right there shows spring is number 31. Also, we have this piece right here, which is the handle uh, for this thing. And so, we're, okay, where is that? I just seen it a second ago. Oh, and so there it is, number 11. So, that's kind of out the door. So, the best you can do, I guess, is look at the brackets, see how they are, which ones they are, and just kind of go from there. Um, and it tells you for 40 inches wide, for 60 inches wide, the assembly support plates number two. Um, well, that's not how it's listed there. So, number two, number 19. I'm going to dig through this stuff and see if any of this other stuff uh, matches. Uh, not having high hopes on that as of right now. Maybe it's in here. On it would actually be in the correct number. Um, but anyway, a lot of parts, a lot of pieces, a lot of it's pretty basic. There's only a couple of them that are similar. You kind of look at them and tell what they are. Not a huge, huge deal, but kind of annoying anyway. Um, let's see. And so what about the, uh, what about the nuts there? Number 33, that shows the nuts and the bolts. Oh, so at least those are correct, I'm guessing. And number 26 for the nuts there, M8 is one and a quarter, so those are the same. So at least the nuts and the bolts are hopefully uh, right. But anyway, I thought I'd better share that as well. Okay. All right, quick little update. So not too bad so far going on 37 minutes. Um, that's including trying to figure some of the stuff out. It's not, it's not very hard if you just look at the pictures and kind of read the instructions. I'm not even really reading them. Um, so I'm setting it up for a 48 inch. And so it comes with this little bar down here. These are the wear bars. If you're setting it up for 60 inch, this wear, the wear bars are actually in the front of the blade. This is the backside. This sits in there in the front like this. Um, and then these other wear bars that are out here, you can see the split right there, the other split right there. Uh, or excuse me, the split right there, that's the middle. Um, so then the two wear bars, the two long wear bars, butt together. And then there's this little goofy bracket that slides in the back right here. Oh, let's see. So that little bracket right there. So that slides in there. You can see the wear bar right here. That's the short piece that I was just using. That goes to the middle. This is for the 60 inch. It says to refer to illustration six. It's actually illustration seven. So Colpin, your quality control really sucks and you guys need to rewrite your instructions. And then you need to get on somebody, whoever's doing the stickering because the stickers don't match the parts. But anyway, so there it is there. Right now I'm onto this bracket right here, which is shown right there. And these are the 18 millimeter bolts. Um, so far all the numbers for the bolts and the nuts uh, are correct. It's just the part numbers on the brackets and stuff are not correct. So that's a quick little update. I've um, got the wear bars installed in the front. Using those, those are the 13 millimeters. And yeah, quick little update. So now I'm just continuing to put the rest of it together. So going on to that phase next.
All right, and all the parts are kind of loose. It says to leave them loose. That is true because if you have everything tightened down, this little bracket won't slide into here. You can see I still got some stuff kind of loose. I just cinched them up so they're snug, but they're still loose. There's still a little bit of wiggle room. All right, continuing on. Okay, back to another quick little update. Got the springs on and got this piece assembled. So that's a pivot lock bracket right there. You can see that it'll go into the slots. Got a little spring right here. Um, so when you assemble this part, <laughs> you get this plate on. There's this other little plate. Be sure you put that underneath and you slide one of these bigger 18 millimeter bolts underneath. And then this is one of the uh, little 13 millimeters. And uh, so that's the bracket from underneath this plate right here. It's got the little feet to come down. So that's where we're at on this. It's got the little skids on. Those are adjustable through there. And so next it'll be attaching the plow frame. And so there's that part right there. That's what we're going to be doing here in just a second. So that was it. Um, yeah, and we're at 54 minutes and moving along pretty quickly just trying to figure out some of the brackets because as I showed in the beginning of the video, the numbers don't match. But anyway, so it's actually going along pretty smooth, pretty easy. And that's just with me going back and forth because I found it easier to, to go with a, to also have a deep wall socket and the wrenches. Um, so that's going back and forth to the toolbar. So, and, and I took a little break. So we're probably actually only at about 50 minutes, which is not bad. And I'm doing this on the ground um, because my garage is a mess. So anyway, all right, quick little update. So we got it all bolted together, torqued down to their specs. Um, and they list their specs right there in the booklet. So here's where we're at. Got this upper bracket on. As you can see, it goes on the top. They specifically want this coal pin sticker on the right hand side as you're facing the bike back of the plow left hand side that's what they were that's the notice that they gave they tell you that's where they want it for whatever reason and so there's a little diagram of the sticker and there it is there notice the colpin sticker item number 16 should be positioned on the right top side facing towards the pivot plate and so that's where they want it guys i'm telling you just do what they ask because if something were to go wrong they want to take pictures of it or whatever they're gonna somewhere to happen one of the tubes are gonna say oh well the coal pin sticker is you know that tubes on the wrong side it should be on the other side blah 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 just play their game do what they ask uh, it just makes it a lot easier in the long run i've seen these companies play those stupid games before so anyway now it's the universal mounting brackets that's next so we'll be moving on to that so that's where we just did. And uh, actually, that took right around like 58 minutes or whatever to get it to that point. So now, approximate installation time is 15 to 30 minutes. Universal mounting to the ATV. So that's the parts and the pieces. There's the U-bolts. And it's going to look something like that when it's mounted to your ATV. So, moving on. All right guys, so I took a break and then uh, on this quad, it's a pain in the butt to get that mounting bracket underneath it. And the only place to really mount it was pretty far back. It's different on a Ranger, the Polaris, uh, Can-Am and all those. But the problem I had is when that full turn, the, this mounting bracket as you can see right there um, would have rubbed the wheel and then I have this weird bracket under here so I couldn't slide this up like another inch inch and a half otherwise it rubs the inside of the tire and I still got to cut some of the bolts and stuff but anyway there it is there basically it's all mounted up it's hooked to the winch so that lowers it and raises it um this one's again that's the lever so you turn it and then also down here 
<clears throat> with the tension, you can, once this blade is off the ground, you can actually push this forward. And it's got several levels, as you can see right there, to make a more aggressive cut of the snow. So you can see that right there. That's the arm blade. Here are the feet. And that's what rubs on the ground. <coughs> so you don't use the blade like on your concrete or asphalt. So there it is there, guys. Uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for hanging out with me. And uh, let me get this off. Yeah, that's a little better. Uh, not really. It's kind of dark. But anyway, so yeah, it's all torqued down, ready to go. So that's how it works. And I will let you guys know uh, how it works pushing snow. So here we go guys, so got our quad. Yes. Working pretty good. So I'm actually pushing it into the middle and then all what I'll do is I'll straighten the blade out. You can tell it's kind of cockeyed to the left. And I'll straighten it out. And then I will push it out there. So I just wanted to show that to you guys. Oh. There it is. That's the pull pin. And actually, I can lower it a little bit more. Tilt the blade forward so it gets a little more aggressive. But yeah, plowing it out. So there it is. That is the pull pin. ATP snow plow. And I can also make it wider. Not that hard, not that difficult. You just gotta undo those two little bolts right there and it'll slide out. So, all right, so there it is, guys. So, that is the review and kind of a quick look at the Cool Pin ATV Snow Plow. I hope it helps you out. If you're looking at one of these, uh, it doesn't, it seems like it's actually built pretty well. Their uh, quality control on their instruction manual sucks and whoever's put on the stickers, but hey, you know what? If it works, it works. You just got to look at the pictures. It's not that bad. Um, it took me just over an hour to get all set up, and then it took me a little bit longer uh, to actually mount it onto the quad. I will probably eventually build my own bracket, but right now it's just going to work. I mean, it's going to have to wait till spring or summer. It has been freezing. I am freezing. So, once again, thanks for watching this, guys, and I hope it helps you out. And if you're looking at one of these, Coal pins, well, that's what they look like, and that's how they go together. All right, well, we'll talk to you guys a little bit later. Until next time.